Second Chronicles 31, 20 through 21 says, and Thus Hezekiah did throughout all Judah, and he did what was good and right before the Lord the God, and every work which he began in the service of the house of God, and in the law and the commandment, seeking his God, he did with all his heart, and he prospered. If you're joining us in reading through this nine-day reading plan, today's reading is Second Chronicles 31, 1 through 32:8. And I would encourage you to read that passage. When the Israelites were about to enter the land, Moses gave them a command that half of Israel was to stand on Mount Ebal, and the other half of Israel was to stand on Mount Gerizim. Deuteronomy 27 and 28. Those who were on Mount Ebal would read the curses, which would occur if the people of Israel failed to live by faith and follow the rule of the law. Those on Mount Gerizim would read the blessings, that which would occur if they followed the rule of law by faith. This story is concerning the priest during Hezekiah's time, as the king validates this principle. The Levites were not to have any physical portion of the land of Israel. All the other tribes received portions of that land under Joshua and Caleb. The Levite's portion was that of God. He would provide for their needs, and the way their needs were going to be provided was through the sacrifices in the temple. When those who were in the temple repented and did what God wanted them to do, he blessed them. And the priest did not have to farm and work for their food, but rather it was given to them because of the work they did in the temple. And this principle should really follow today. Those who declare themselves to or dedicate themselves to God's work should be supported by those who are God has given to work in society. Both groups of people work. But those who have dedicated themselves to God should receive what they need from those who work inside of society. And that means that those who are dedicated to God should not seek wealth outside of what God provides. And that doesn't mean they shouldn't save and plan for the future, nor does it mean they are to live in abject poverty either. Those who are truly dedicated to God's service should be blessed by those whom they are serving. And that doesn't mean that they get to fly a big airplane, that they have a huge home, drive Rolls Royces and Bentleys. But it does mean that they are to have a comfortable living because they've placed their faith and trust in God for his provision, and he provides for the people who are not solely dedicated to his work. We are to treat those who have been set aside as special in the service that they have given themselves to God. We should pray for them, encourage them, serve them, and bless them 